knows how important freedom and liberty is. Everybody, give these kids a big round of applause. So, our forefathers, when they came to America many, many, many years ago, they had a vision. They had a dream. They wanted to create a country based on liberty, based on freedom, based on the power of the individual, not based on the power of the collective. They wanted a land where you can go where you want to go, do what you want to do, be what you want to be, live the way you want to live, and pray the way you want to pray. Let's analyze that today in Ohio. Can you go where you want to go? No. Can you be what you want to be? No. Can you do what you want to do? No. Can you live the way you want to live? No. And you certainly can still pray the way you want to pray, but can you pray where you want to pray? No, th these are basic fundamental freedoms that have been taken away that millions of our veterans, our men and women who serve. I see Jennifer Gross who served. Many, many of my, my daddy stormed the beaches of Normandy not to see our freedoms be eroded, but he wants our freedoms to be increased. And look, we've always had quarantines. It goes back, it goes back to Jamestown. But you have to when we quarantine the well, we only ever quarantine the sick. We never quarantine the well. And, and I gotta tell you what, as much as I think she is an uneducated, I mean an unelected bureaucrat, I do not blame Dr. Acton at all. As director of health, she has one focus and one focus only, and that is to do what she thinks is in the best interest to preserve the health of all Ohioans. Now, what you have to do, you have to quest, well, that's another topic, yeah. No, it's not. Uh, actually, it is, and I, I believe you. Well, you agree. And how come you don't fully answer agree. your emails, sir? Uh, Ma'am, I will be happy to talk to you when we're finished here, okay? Uh, so I don't blame Dr. Acton at all. Um, the, the problem is uh, Mike DeWine, and I give Mike DeWine credit. He says the buck stops with me. So DeWine is the one we have to hold accountable because he's the one that has to consider everything beyond just the health of Ohioans. He has to consider the impact on business and a whole bunch of other things. And Mike DeWine, to his credit, is saying, hold me accountable, blame me. I know Mike DeWine. I think he is a man of uh, character, uh, and I don't question what he's doing. I just question why he's doing it. I believe, I believe he's got it wrong. I believe he's got it wrong. So how bad is this? Let me share a few statistics with you. Uh, I'll save a bunch because Mark, Mark shared a bunch. But listen to this. If you are under the age of 40, your odds of dying from this, if you collect it, are less than one tenth of one percent. Virtually non-existent. If you are between 50 and 70 and you catch this, your odds are still below one percent. If you are 70 and above, your odds climb to about 5% only if you catch it. So is it really real? And look, I think we can all agree that if you look at the states that closed down compared to the states that didn't close down, not counting New York, the numbers are about the same. If you look at the countries that went on shutdown compared to those that didn't, the numbers are about the same. But let's take New York. Governor Cuomo shared this statistic two days ago. Of all of the people that are hospitalized in New York, my guess would have been nursing homes and senior living centers and jails would have accounted for the most of it. Wrong. Nursing homes, senior living facilities, 22% in New York. Jails, 1%. Of those that were in the hospital, 66% people that followed the stay-at-home rules. 66%. That's according to Governor Cuomo. So we need to get out. We need fresh air. We need to be with other people. And those statistics just reinforce that. Uh, that is right. Now, on April 20th, I was the first legislature. Ma'am, I, I am not being rude, but I have a hearing aid. And with the wind in my ear, I cannot.
not hear what you're saying. I do apologize. I'll be happy to talk to you when we're done. To make it worse, I forgot my phone, so I can't even adjust my hearing aid to account for the thing. Uh, but in the letter I wrote to Mike DeWine on the 20th, I said you need to allow business to open on May 1st with no, no rules whatsoever how they open. You see, I believe Mark Welch knows best how to protect his customers, his employees, and his vendors better than any bureaucrat. Todd Manier owns a daycare center. How can daycare centers not be the first to open? How can we open the economy back up if people don't have a place to put their kids? And I believe Todd Manier knows best how to protect his vendors, his students, and his employees than any governor of Europe. In addition to that, I said we need some breaks on some taxes. If you do open up and you mandate that PPE equipment is purchased, those businesses that comply should get a 100% tax credit. No uh, additional unfunded mandates on business. I had other rules that I recommended that DeWine uh, move forward with. I got a very thank nice thank you letter, but no action taken on my recommendations whatsoever. Uh, talked a little bit earlier about the devastation to businesses. I had one doctor call me today, actually she called me last week, called me again today, 21 employees, 17 of those 21 she had to furlough, she had to let go. Those 17 employees were very upset, they were mad at her. The four that got their job were thankful. Well, two weeks later, those 17 that were on employment were getting a $600 bonus from the federal government. They let the other four know, nanny, 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 uh, we're making more than you and you're working, and then the other four were mad at her. Now she is cleared to open up, and those that are on unemployment don't want to come back. They're making more money sitting at home than they are being productive. And I don't blame the individuals that take advantage of that. I blame the system that allows it to happen. Yeah. Nancy Nix talked a little bit about the devastation to local governments. Guys, it's going to happen at all levels. If you're a city, a township, a village, or a school district, thank God we live in Butler County where we will be the only county to be 100% debt free in three months, Nancy, is that right? In, in, in a few months. If you are in those counties that don't focus on their court competencies, they don't have reserves like Westchester has built up, uh, the cuts that they're going to have to make are going to go to the bone. Every county, every municipality is going to have to make some cuts, but for those that have been led by liberal philosophies, the cuts are going to be deep, and it's going to affect, unfortunately, first responders, in my opinion, those need that we need to protect the most. And let's talk a little bit about the unintended consequences. We mentioned child abuse, domestic violence, alcoholism is up, drug abuse is up. The doctor that talked to me today said weight gain is up. She is treating more people because they put on 30 pounds in the last six weeks in some cases. But here's one statistic that was shared with our task force yesterday. Every 1% increase in unemployment leads to a 1.6% increase in suicide. Let that sink in. You know, Donald Trump has said we cannot let the cure be more expensive than the disease. And Donald Trump is right. at the state house this week in the house of representatives we put an amendment on senate bill one and senate bill 55 let me tell you what these two amendments do senate bill one uh, addresses the law that amy acton has taken advantage of that was written 108 years ago and yes she does have the right under ohio revised code to do what she's doing you can argue the constitutionality of it but she does have that right now this law was written 108 years ago when if you had a state rep in Hamilton, they could not be up in Columbus in a, a matter of uh, two hours. Actually then it was Chillicothe. Uh, they could not get to Chillicothe in two hours in some cases. It might take them a day. They did not have the opportunity to meet remotely via Zoom and all the technology we have today. So we want to update that law based on today. We still recognize 
somebody's individual decision to make a, a decision in case of a unique circumstance, a chemical spill in Cleveland, for example, that has affected 10 counties all around it. So what we have done, we have said the Director of Health has the authority to make a ruling that will last only 14 days. It will expire at the end of 14 days unless the legislature gets involved and the legislature votes to extend it. Now we're going to do that through a process called JCAR. I won't bore you with the details, but it takes the decision making away from an unelected bureaucrat and puts it to those that you can hold accountable. Your state reps and your senators, if you don't like what they do, you vote them out. And by the way, our country was built on checks and balances, and this system today has no checks and balances. So that's the main thing that we did in Senate Bill 1. In Senate Bill 55, we lowered penalties for non-compliance. So today, if you can open back up and you have a restaurant and you're supposed to have your table six feet apart, and somebody comes in and measures it, and it's five feet ten inches, you are in violation of the law. You are now have been, you will be subjected to a criminal offense, a misdemeanor of the second degree, you're subject to a $950 fine, you are subject to six months in jail, not to mention, if you're a restaurant, what impact will that have when you go to renew your liquor license and you now have a criminal record? Or if you have other licenses that you have to get renewed every year, salon workers, others, if you have a criminal record, that will have a negative impact. So what we are doing, we are saying the first violation is nothing more than a warning. If you are found with the second violation, it becomes a minor misdemeanor. There will be no criminal penalties, no uh, charges against you, and a maximum of a $150 fine, which you have the ability to appeal if you so choose to. And I would like to thank my fellow Butler County State Representative Sarah Crothers and Candace Keller for voting yes on this with me. When you guys see them, you thank them as well. And please do me a favor and reach out to Senator Bill Coley and ask Bill Coley to support this because right now it moved to the Senate. The next steps are for the Senate to uh, concur and then it goes on to the governor for signing. DeWine has said that he will veto it and um, we'll have to see if we have a note, enough votes to override the veto. And one other thing I want to emphasize, guys, if you believe in freedom, if you believe in liberty, everything's going to end up going to our Supreme Court. Right now we have five solid conservatives and two liberals on that Supreme Court. This year there's two judges up for election, Sharon Kennedy and Judy French. If those two conservatives lose, the liberals will be in charge four to three, and rather than just applying the law as we have stated it in Senate Bill 1 and Senate Bill 14, they will start interpreting the law in a way that goes against what the spirit of the law is and goes against the spirit of freedom and liberty that we're all here today to do. Now, I got some great news, all right? There is some good news coming out of this COVID-19 mess, and that is that we as Ohio, as a government, and every single local government has a chance to rebuild. Because what we have is going to be financially devastated. 50 years ago, Ohio's rocking and rolling. We have 24 congressmen. The average Ohioan makes 12% more than the average American. 50 years ago, we implement the income tax, not just on individuals, but on profits of corporations and one negative regulation after another, and we are driving businesses away. Today, depending on what source you look at, we are the fifth to the eighth most left state in the nation. And I don't mean from an ideological perspective, I mean people leaving Ohio. Number one reason people leave, better economic opportunity elsewhere. Now here's one statistic that nobody can argue. 50 years ago we have 24 congressmen, today we're down to 16. We know, we know when the census comes out this year we're going to 15, maybe 14. That's about a 40% loss. No other state in America has taken that big a loss other than Ohio on a percentage basis. And today I'm ashamed to say the average Ohioan makes about 12% less than the average American. But we have a chance to rebuild. We were the land of flight. We can now be the land of aerospace. We were the land of manufacturing. We can bring those jobs back from China, not only to America, but right here in Ohio. It's going to be up to us to get rid of the regulations that drove them away, to get rid of the taxation.